vegetables of all shapes and sizes can and should make their way onto your plate for each and every meal. Packed with essential nutrients and full of fiber, they are whole foods which can help you fight obesity and diabetes. But believe it or not, there are still a few less than healthy veggies which might actually skyrocket your blood sugar. So we're going to unveil the top five worst vegetables for diabetics. But first, we'd love you to like this vid and subscribe to our channel. We're Diabetes Smarts and we're bringing you all the latest insights into diabetes and good health. Later in today's vid, we'll reveal how you can receive two free gifts from us. Plus, stick around to the end to discover a secret class of veggies, which recent evidence suggests may be harmful for your body. Right now, get ready for the top five worst vegetables for diabetics. Number five, butternut squash. This one may be tricky. Some believe that butternut squash should be on the naughty list when it comes to veggies for diabetics. At the same time, this starchy vegetable has been touted for its wide range of health benefits. So what's the deal? Squash is among the veggies with the highest carbohydrate content, but here's the rub. No one is really sure what the accurate carb count is for this food. Some believe that it will give you anywhere from 16 to 22 grams of carbohydrates per cup, but only 3 grams of fiber, making the carb to fiber ratio not as good as other less starchy veggies. And yet, cooking your squash, which let's face it, most everyone probably does, actually lowers the carb amount. So, some tests have shown that baking 100 grams of butternut squash could reduce the carb count from about 8.3 grams to 7.4 grams. Plus, even though it's considered to be high carb, cooked squash still has a medium-low glycemic index score of 51 and a glycemic load of only 3. In the end, this winter squash is renowned for its low calorie content, its good folate amount, and its amazingly high level of vitamins. In fact, one cup of cooked butternut squash will give you over 50% of your daily recommended intake for both vitamin A and vitamin C. So, for some people, the carb load you'll get from cooked or uncooked butternut squash could be problematic, especially if you eat too much. But for most people, diabetic and non-diabetic alike, butternut squash can still have a healthy place on your dinner table. Number four, green peas. Tiny green peas on their own aren't bad for you, but looks can be deceiving. Only one cup of green peas contains about 20 grams of carbohydrate. Most of the caloric content of peas is pure carbohydrate. Green peas, or garden peas, come from the Piceum sativum plant. Technically legumes, many still categorize peas to be within the vegetable family. The danger with peas doesn't necessarily come from anything too wrong with your typical single little pea, but because they are small, many people tend to overeat them without ever realizing it. The starch content within peas means that they may raise your blood sugar higher and faster than other non-starchy vegetables. However, the sugars found within peas are complex, not simple, meaning that they'll take longer to break down inside your body than carbs you'd get from simple sugar foods like white bread. Most nutritionists and doctors actually recognize that a small amount of peas can actually have a positive effect for those suffering from diabetes. They may be higher in carb content than other vegetables, but they are still loaded with beneficial antioxidants, fiber, and omega-3 fatty acids. This means that you can healthfully eat these tiny green legumes, but you'll just want to make sure you keep your portions in check. Try limiting your serving size to half a cup and eat them as part of a balanced meal. Number three, celery. Celery on its own can be a great option if you're looking for a low calorie snack with good water content. But some tall growing produce like celery is highly saturated in pesticide. In fact, celery often tops the list of the dirty dozen an annual report from the Environmental Working Group 
which ranks the produce farmers most heavily treated with pesticides. Studies now show that certain compounds found within all pesticides can raise your risk of type 2 diabetes by up to 64%. It's been found that these compounds may reduce the metabolic functions of cells, negatively impact insulin secretion, and may even lead to obesity. Therefore, celery, often heavily treated with pesticides, could raise your risk for becoming obese or diabetic especially if you tend to eat this veggie in very large quantities. This also means you may want to think twice about the amount of other heavily treated veggies you consume. Some other vegetables that top the dirty dozen list include tomatoes and kale. In the end, is celery really bad for you? Not exactly. It's a great source of antioxidants, it's low on the glycemic index, and it's loaded with beneficial vitamins and minerals, including fiber. So this is a case of a vegetable not being inherently bad for you. You can still enjoy celery, just do your best to buy organic or less treated varieties. And always give them a good wash before you eat. Number 2. Corn These days, corn is everywhere, and not just on your cob or in your popcorn bag. You've probably heard at least something about high fructose corn syrup in America. Corn has been subsidized by the government for decades, which has led to this highly processed sweetener created from corn to be used in a wide range of packaged products. But extensive research has shown that this simple sugar sweetening agent has become a huge factor in the current obesity and diabetes epidemics. Beyond processed corn syrup, plain old corn is still among the vegetables that will give you a big carb load. One ear of corn usually contains about 17 grams of carbs, but only 2.5 grams of fiber. It's also considered to be one of the highest starch vegetables available. Just one cup of corn kernels will give you over 25 grams of starch. Doctors and nutritionists warn against consuming an overabundance of starchy food, as eating too much can contribute to blood glucose spikes and weight gain. Meanwhile, the glycemic index for corn sits at 52, which isn't too high, but its glycemic load clocks in at 15, which is higher than many other veggies. So corn could lead to a blood sugar spike if you eat too much and you don't pair it with quality protein or fiber to slow your body's insulin response. That said, scientists have found plenty of health benefits from corn. Though these tiny yellow bites of flavor are starchy, they contain a good amount of resistant starch, which shouldn't negatively affect your blood sugar. Plus, studies have shown that eating whole grain corn in small amounts can actually work to reduce your risk of type 2 diabetes and obesity. Therefore, just like peas, you can still healthfully eat a bit of corn here and there. Just don't slather it with a ton of butter, eat it as part of a balanced meal with other low-carb vegetables and good sources of protein and don't overdo your portions. Are you ready to discover the absolute worst vegetable for diabetics? Hold your horses. First, we've got two free gifts just for you. Get the best diabetes fighting foods onto your plate with our new book, Superfoods for Diabetics. And discover a world of knowledge to help you live a life free from obesity and diabetes with episode one of our eight part series, That Diabetes Documentary. Grab both just by clicking the link in the description below. And now, time for the number one worst vegetable for diabetics white potato. You may already have heard that potatoes aren't a great option for diabetics, but why? White potatoes are known to be vegetables with some of the highest sugar content. One medium-sized potato contains about 37 grams of carbs, and a boiled potato can reach as high as 82 on the glycemic index. Is it any wonder that a 2016 study found that women who regularly ate potatoes tended to have heightened blood pressure? And a recent Harvard study discovered that people who regularly consume french fries and baked or mashed potatoes put on an average of 3.5 pounds every four years. But for white potatoes, their potential healthiness or hurtfulness can have a lot to do with how you cook them. Frying your potatoes, especially in unhealthy cooking oils, can end up raising their saturated and trans fat content. 
but even boiling can leach important nutrients out of your potato. Instead, try baking, steaming, or even microwaving your potatoes to lock in the vitamin, mineral, and fiber content while avoiding that increase of carb content. That's right, potatoes still contain plenty of nutrition, from potassium to antioxidants to vitamins C and B6. Plus, potato skins are a good source of fiber. In fact, pound for pound or ounce for ounce, potato skins actually contain more nutrition than their starchy insides. And yes, potatoes, particularly white potatoes, are considered to house possibly the highest quantity of starch in the veggie world. But remember, most of this is resistant starch, which actually aids in digestive health and won't spike your blood sugar. So white potatoes can still have a place on your plate, but like with most foods, you'll want to keep your portions in check. And you'll want to make sure to eat the skins to take advantage of their high nutrient content. And that's the list. Remember, there's no vegetable that is truly bad for you as long as you don't overdo your portion sizes. As promised, here's the newest variety of veggies making waves for their potentially harmful effects you may want to be wary of nightshades. Today, there's anecdotal evidence suggesting that nightshades, like potatoes, tomatoes, onions, and peppers, may have an inflammatory effect for some people. Scientists have hypothesized that solanine, a compound found within all nightshades, may not sit well with some people. Solanine intolerance occurs infrequently, and solanine allergies are even rarer. However, many people still seem to experience ill effects, like bloating and nausea, from nightshades. But as of now, no scientific research has extensively studied this mystery. For the vast majority of the population, nightshades appear to be safe, and carry many health benefits. However, if you're thinking that you may have an intolerance to nightshades or any food, a simple way to solve the riddle for yourself is to cut those foods from your diet and test to see if you feel better within a few weeks. Apart from the mystery of nightshades, in general, it's best to avoid canned vegetables as they tend to be soaked in sodium or sugar-rich preservatives. But you can still healthfully add this style of vegetable by looking for low-sodium or sodium-free varieties. Also, make sure to give any canned veggies a good rinse before you cook. Otherwise, most any and all veggies will give you amazing health benefits and should be a main focus of your diet. At mealtime, try to fill at least half of your plate with low starch veggies like spinach, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumber, asparagus, you name it. Don't forget to subscribe to the Diabetes Smarts channel. And make sure to grab your two free gifts, Superfoods for Diabetics and Episode 1 of that Diabetes documentary. Thanks for watching, guys. Go have a diabetes fighting day.